Yo, I want to talk about eggs. Nah, for real, this video won't be as complicated as the title suggests. Despite how much I moan, I do love this game, and all of my critiques and complaints come from a place of passion, of wanting the game to be better, of wanting the company that makes the game to do better. But sometimes, it's just as important to celebrate something that you love. So here is my top 8 Magic the Gathering eggs ranked into tiers. That's right, I'm doing both kinds of list. Why top 8? Well, because, you know, the tournament winners are filtered into the top 8 when they win. It's like a reference. Ah, you get it. Honourable mentions. Before we begin, I'd be doing this list a disservice if I didn't at least mention Atla Palani, Nest Tender and Rock Egg. Atla Palani is the go-to three colour lead of an Egg Commander deck, with her ability to create eggs and cheat out creatures each time an egg you control dies. Rook Egg, as Google has told me it's pronounced, is famous for being the first ever creature card with the egg subtype printed, all the way back in Arabian Nights. These are both worthy contenders for the list, I just don't have any personal attachment for either of them, so they didn't make the cut. Number 8. Dragon Egg, a 3 mana 0 2 with Defender, first printed in M14. Originally printed as just a dragon, the card was changed in later editions to include the egg subtype. The card is a good depiction of an egg because once it's dead, emerging from within it is a 2 2 dragon token with flying. So, as the first card added to our tier list, I have to ask is this a good egg? And yeah, it's an egg, it hatches, and then a creature comes out. I know most tier lists are portrait, but I'm going to do mine landscape to display the cards a little bit easier, and I award Dragon Egg the very tippy top of S rank. Number 7. Time Stop from Champions of Kamigawa. A 6 mana instant with the effect of just ending the turn. Hilarious in multiplayer games to see someone sit for 20 minutes waiting for their go, just to have you immediately end it as they start. And that time control mechanic is represented in the art by a woman seen from one perspective holding a bird, but from another perspective holding an egg, with the implication that she has the power to hatch and unhatch it. Looking at our tier list though, she's not a good egg. The art only features an egg, and she's not an egg at all. Because of that, Time Stop gets the rank of E, the lowest rank on our tier list. Number 6. Reveal Lark? A 5 mana 4 free from Morning Tide, which is some kind of glowing nest thing. It's got the elemental subtype, so maybe this creature is made up of the egg element. It has the ability to rebirth two previously dead creatures when it comes into play, which is kind of egg-like, I suppose. I mean, I don't know what's going on in this card, but the artwork is gorgeous. Let's, uh, let's take a peek at some other Morning Tide elementals, see if they provide any context. Okay, Flood Chaser, Ooh. Fester Creep, Supreme Exemplar, yeah, no, I've got no idea what these are, but I like them. Is Reveal Lark a good egg though? Well, not an egg itself, I don't think. It is a nest that contains eggs, so not S rank, but one just below. We'll call that G tier for good egg. Number 5. Rock Egg from M11 is vastly different to Rock Lobster from the B-52s. And that's the best joke I've ever written. Rock Egg is a 3 mana 0 3 precursor to our number 8 slot, Dragon Egg. Both cards create a token creature with flying when they die, but Rock Egg's bird is a 3 3 where Dragon Egg's dragon is only a 2 2. Hence why the Rock Egg is higher on this list. Well, I know the tokens are more complicated than that. J to be honest, I just think birds are cooler than dragons in general. I don't know why, but it's my list, it's going higher. Both cards were originally printed without the egg subtype, but had it added later when the card was reprinted in later editions. A practice that I personally hate, don't change cards after you've printed them. This isn't Hearthstone. I don't want to have to Google every card before I play it to make sure it still does what it says it does. They did it with the eggs, and they did it with Phyrexians too, retroactively going back and adding that subtype to a bunch of cards. The worst one for it is Hounds. Hounds used to be a creature type, but then they decided that they didn't want that anymore, so they changed them all into dogs. I mean, it's not a massive deal, but have you seen the card, Coat of Arms? Imagine how much more confusing this is to play, now that the cards on the table don't even have the correct creature types printed on them. I would love for them to stop doing that. Hashtag MTG Justice for Hounds. Anyway, just like Dragon Egg, this is the gold standard for good eggs. S rank. Number 4. 
an ancient creature from a long forgotten plane, discovered and rediscovered time again by those foolish enough to think they could bend or break the will of these hive mind beings, ever adapting, ever changing, but always biding their time to break loose and turn those that would call themselves master into their next prey. Every horror story has a beginning, and this one starts with the first sliver. A five color 7-7 seven, seven legendary creature which uses its hive mind to give itself and every other sliver spell you cast the cascade ability, meaning your opponent will soon be overrun with these writhing nightmares. We see the first sliver appropriately protecting a clutch of its eggs, but where does it rank on our tier list? I mean, when asking myself, is the first sliver a good egg? I have to say, well, no it isn't. If that's our metric for measuring it, it's kind of garbage. However, the art does depict it laying eggs, and the mechanics have it hatching new slivers, so it is better than Time Stopper E tier. I think I'm going to put it one rank above, a tier I'm going to label G for garbage. Number 3. Nest Robber. A 2 mana 2-1 two from Ixalan. It's got the dinosaur subtype, and as most dinosaurs on Ixalan, it shakes off that Jurassic Park imagery of what dinosaurs could look like by being feathered. After all, dinosaurs evolved into birds, and there's plenty of evidence to suggest that a lot of them would have looked more avian than reptilian on site. It's been suggested that larger dinosaurs, like the T-Rex, probably didn't have feathers due to their size, but our little nest robber here, he has the perfectly appropriate plumage of a parrot. And look at these goofy little hands, clutching what he's stolen, mouth agape as he stares at the larger creature soar overhead as it returns to its nest. He's number three on this list because I love him, but is he a good egg? No, in fact he's an egg thief, E tier. Number two. Ludwig, necro alchemist, nay, necro genius, is a Dr. Frankenstein type from the dark gothic plain of Innistrad. And while his experiments are usually done on the dead, they may sometimes branch out to those yet to be born. Ludwig's test subject is a 2 mana 0 3 with Defender, that with enough hatchling counters transforms into Ludwig's Abomination, a 13 13 with Trample. Now I love Innistrad, and I love this card, and there was a big part of me that wanted to put this at number 1. However, Looking at Gatherer, Magic the Gathering's official online database of cards, we can see that its subtypes are listed as Lizard Egg, but there has never been a printing of this card with those subtypes. At least when they changed Rock Egg and Dragon Egg, they reprinted the cards so you could go out and buy accurate versions, but as it stands, if anyone plays Ludwig's test subject, you would never know it was an egg unless you googled it first. Reading the cards should explain the cards, you shouldn't need to take extra steps. What do you think? Am I crazy? Are you glad that they alter the cards after you've bought and paid for them? Should I do a video on the Hearthstoneification of magic? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and uh, while you're down there, like and subscribe. It's good for the algorithm. Thanks. But is this a good egg? Uh, Ludwig's test subject. I love you, but you do not get S rank. G, you are a good egg, but that subtype shenanigans brings you down a rank. You could have been so much more. Hashtag MTG Justice for Hounds. Number one. Well, what else could it be? The granddaddy of all eggs, first printed in Alpha, with perhaps the best name and mechanics of a Magic the Gathering card of all time. That's right, our number one slot goes to Dingus Egg, a four mana artifact that reads, whenever anyone loses land, <laughs> Egg does two damage to that player for each land lost. <laughs> it's obviously been updated and reworded over the years, but unlike my previous complaints, nothing has been added or removed from the way the card works. It's exactly the same as it's always been. Is it a good egg? Yes, it is an egg in its purest forms. It's the original egg, baby, the first printing. It's fun to say and it's fun to play. Dingus Egg is a good egg S rank. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. Like I say, I do love this game. I just wish they'd stop messing with it. But these are my top eight egg cards. At this point, I want to hear in the comments below, what are yours? Did I miss any? Are there any you think that should have been on this list that I haven't included? Oh, and most importantly, hashtag MTG justice for hounds. Thank you very much for watching this video. And thank you to my sponsor, me. Check out my Patreon linked in the description below. Hit the like button, leave a comment, install an ad blocker, most importantly, and I cannot stress this enough, subscribe and share the video with a friend, hit the notification bell and do all of the things that the algorithm loves. 
If you agree or disagree with any of my points, or you want to see me make a video on another subject, let me know and I will see you next time.